Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So here is a client that we're currently working with and initially um, she sent me this email and she says the ethics committee is forcing me to allow them to turn off life support for my uncle, for my 69 year old uncle or move him. I have until 3 p.m. tomorrow um, the 3rd of March. I'm not going to name the hospital because she put the hospital in the email. The ethics committee and the ethics committee is so insulting and condescending when I want questions answered. After reading your information, I'm really upset because you provide spot on info and you provide uh, solutions to all my uh, issues and questions. Um, I do not want to turn off his life support because that's not what he wants and I'm his power of attorney. They say he aspirated um, and um, the ICU treats him for the aspiration pneumonia. I need time or my uncle needs time to get out of this you know, and not have his life support switched off. Thankfully, after you've given me advice and I uh, demanded better treatment for my uncle as my power of attorney, as is my right, they backed off and they're now finally treating him. So the lesson here is this, you know, the intensive care team has really no say about your uncle's treatment or any, you know, if you're watching this and it's your mom, it's your dad, it's your auntie, it's your spouse it's your sister it's your brother it's your child you are the one in control assuming your loved one can't speak for themselves you know here is another comparison that i would like to make surely if you are the power of attorney the intensive care team would have asked you to give consent to certain procedures that might be intubation that might be a procedure for a central line for an arterial line maybe for a bronchoscopy maybe for dialysis, maybe for a tracheostomy. They've done that. Why would they not ask you for consent to continue or stop life support? Can you see that there's um, double standards here, right? So never be shy to ask for what you want. Never be shy to ask to save someone's life. You always have to ask the question, what's, why are they in such a rush to terminate someone's life? And do never ever let anyone tell you, well, you have until tomorrow three o'clock, you know, or tomorrow until five o'clock, whatever the case may be. Do never ever work with other people's timelines. You work with your own timelines. They have no right to terminate life support. Um, if they terminate life support without your consent, I argue that could be perceived as murder, right? And uh, talking about ethics committee, I have make, made numerous videos about ethics committees in intensive care, and I call them end of life committees, right? They are, it's a euphemism for end of life committee and whatever they do is usually always to empty beds in ICU and they will say, you know, that we as the ethics committee think that it's quote unquote in the best interest of someone to die. And that seems to be ethical in 2023. I have big reservations there and I have a different opinion on that. Uh, the ethics committee should not make statements and play God and think they know it all because they often don't. And they don't take families' wishes and patients' wishes into consideration. They are uh, um, under the guise of a hospital managing beds. That's what's really happening. So that is my quick tip for today. If you have a loved one in intensive care, go to intensivecarehotline.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website, or simply um, send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also, have a look at our membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org there you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in a membership area and via email uh, and we answer all questions intensive care related in the forum and via email if you need a medical record review please contact us as well 
Um, we review medical records for ICU patients in real time and we also review medical records for ICU patients after intensive care. Uh, but we strongly recommend that you get access to medical records in real time so you can have that second opinion in real time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Uh, share the video with your friends and families. Uh, click the like button, click the notification bell and comment below what you want to see next, what questions and insights you have from this video and whether you agree or disagree um, with what I've just shared. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll talk to you in a few days. Take care.